Hey there everybody, welcome to our lesson on the theory of tectonic plates. Now in the previous two lessons we discussed two things. We talked about the theory of continental drift and also the process of sea force spreading. Now in the theory of continental drift, Alfred Wegener suggested that the continents were all once together in one super landmass and have drifted apart, but he couldn't explain how he did that. Later on, scientists then discovered the process of sea force spreading in which mid-ocean ridges created new crust pushing older crust away from the mid-ocean ridge, causing the seafloor to spread and pushing the continents apart. Now, because of these two discoveries, we've now come up with a theory called the theory of tectonic plates. So let's talk about the details of the theory of tectonic plates. Okay, so according to the theory of tectonic plates, the lithosphere is broken up into several pieces called plates. So when we talk about tectonic plates, we're talking about chunks of lithosphere. The Earth its outer shell, the lithosphere, is not one solid shell. If you take a look at the map at the bottom here, you'll notice that the Earth's lithosphere is actually broken up into sections, and these sections are called plates. And we have major sections or major plates such as the Pacific Plate, the North American Plate, South American Plate, African Plate, Eurasian Plate, Australian Indian Plate, as well as several minor ones such as the Cocos Plate, the Caribbean Plate, the Scotia Plate, and so forth. Now the reason why the seafloor is able to spread is because these plates actually float on the mantle. And because they float on the mantle, they move around on the mantle, specifically the layer called the asthenosphere. Now how do they move on the mantle? Okay, the first thing that you need to know is this. You need to know about the process of convection. Now, in convection, what happens is hot material in the mantle rises because as the Earth's core releases heat, it heats up the bottom part of the mantle. And as that material in the mantle gets warmer and warmer and warmer, it's going to rise because its density decreases. So here you have a convection current or section where convection is happening. So this lower part of the material of the mantle is warming up and then rises because it is less dense. As it moves towards the surface, it starts to cool, moves underneath the lithosphere, and then sinks back down again. So as a result, it creates like a wheel-like motion, and this current just goes round and round and round. As a result of this convection current and this motion, the plate, or the South American plate actually, is going to move in this direction. If we take a look to the right here, this convection current again, the lower mantle is being heated up by the core, and the warm material rises, cools and then sinks, creating this wheel-like motion again, and as a result, the plate moves this way. So as you can see, because of these convection currents, the plates are moving in opposite directions, which allowed C4 spreading to occur, and then the separation of South America and Africa. However, sometimes plates do come together based on the convection currents around them. If you take a look at this convection current here, you'll notice that the material is flowing in this direction towards South America. So what happens now is that you have the Pacific Plate, the ocean floor in the Pacific Ocean, colliding with the South American Plate with the continent of South America. So because of the convection currents below the Earth's surface, we actually have plates colliding or separating. And as a result, we create boundaries. And there are three types of boundaries that form because of convection. We have convergent boundaries, divergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. However, before we move on to what those three boundaries do, let's take a quick look at an animation about how convection actually happens in the mantle. It happens because hot rock rises, heated by the Earth's core. Near the surface, the rock spreads in two directions and goes sideways. It begins to lose heat. Eventually, the much cooler rock sinks back down. Through this spreading process, the Earth's crust is very slowly dragged apart. And it's this that ultimately causes the continents to move. Okay, so I hope you found that clip interesting and I hope it clarified any confusions or questions for you. Now, we're gonna start talking about the different types of boundaries that are formed by tectonic plates. The first boundary that we're gonna talk about is a divergent boundary. And a divergent boundary is where two plates start to separate. I always remember a divergent boundary being separating because when I think about the word divide, when you divide things up, you split things up. And when you split things up, things are separated. So divergent boundaries divide and split into opposite directions. And when you have a divergent boundary, a divergent boundary can create two what we call surface features, or things that we find on the Earth's surface. 
One we already spoke about is the mid-ocean ridge, where magma rises up through the crust, spills out onto the surface, creates new ocean floor, and causes seafloor spreading to occur. However, even though this occurs in the ocean, divergent boundaries can be found on land as well. And when we find them on land, they are called rift valleys, and they work very much in the same way. So let's take a look at an example of a rift valley on Earth today. Okay, so here we have a picture of the eastern, northeastern coast of Africa. And this area is known as the Great Rift Valley. Now, if you've ever looked at the map of Africa, you'll notice that the Middle Eastern or Arabian Peninsula kind of looks like it fits into the northeastern part of Africa. And the reason why it looks like that is because it was also once a part of Africa. And what happened was, is you had a divergent boundary down the middle of the Red Sea start to create seafloor spreading, creating this rift. So because this land was once together, it rifted apart and eventually filled in with water, creating the Red Sea. Now that's what happened the, with the Arabian Peninsula. However, if you continue to look down the coast of Africa, this rifting is occurring in other places too. So you have land rifting here, so continental crust is splitting apart, and eventually this section will break off from the major continent, as well as by Lake Victoria, okay, you have the rifting occurring here, and eventually the eastern portion of this continent will break off apart, and down here you have rifting going on as well. So that's why this area is called the Great Rift Valley because you have rifting occurring on the continent itself. Now the next type of boundary we have is called convergent boundaries. And convergent boundaries are where boundaries or plates converge, or I remember collide. And there are three types of convergent boundaries you can have. You can have an oceanic continental boundary. And what that is is when you have oceanic crust here colliding with continental crust there. Or you can have an oceanic oceanic boundary where you have oceanic crust colliding with more oceanic crust. Or you can have a continental continental boundary where two pieces of land or continents collide together. Okay, during an oceanic continental boundary, what happens is this. When the oceanic crust collides with the continental crust, oceanic crust has more metal in it, so it's going to be more dense. And as a result, that dense material, as you know, when dense things collide with less dense things, the heavier or more dense things sink or go underneath. So the ocean floor actually sinks back down into the earth in a process called subduction. And the area in which this happens is called a subduction zone. So as this crust goes back down into the earth, it actually gets remelted into magma, and then it makes its way up through the earth's surface and, it, and then erupts out of the volcanoes. Now here's an example of a convergent boundary that's oceanic and continental. If you take a look here, this is South America, and on the western coast of South America, you have this really, really dark line that runs down the coast. And the reason why there's this dark line is because you have the floor of the Pacific Ocean moving and colliding with the land of the South American plate. So you have the Pacific plate colliding with the South American plate. And the reason why this dark line is here is because the ocean floor located to the west of this dark line is actually sinking back down into the earth. And this dark line represents a trench. And as this ocean floor sinks back down into earth, it remelts the rock, and that's why there's a lot of volcanoes on the western coast of South America. So that's one example of an oceanic continental boundary. An oceanic oceanic boundary works the same way in that when the two pieces of crust collide, one will be more dense, and then it will subduct and move down into the earth, melt, erupt and create volcanoes on the surface. So oceanic, 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 and oceanic continental boundaries work the same, except they're just two different types of crust. However, continental crust works a little bit differently. Continental crust has two pieces of land colliding, and although some of it will subduct underneath based on the rules of density, the continental crust on the surface is not going to go down into the earth. It's actually going to collide and force the rock on the surface to fold and buckle. And that's how you have your regular mountains, which are not volcanic. So here's an, an example of mountain formation. Remember, when we talked about continental drift, India was much further south than it is today. But because of the ridge located nearby, India was pushed up north as a result of seafloor spreading and then collided in with China. Since the seafloor is going to push India further north, it gets shoved into China, and as a result, the rocks are going to fold and they're going to buckle. 
And because of the folding and buckling, the rocks then create the mountain ranges. And since India is constantly being pushed into China, you increase the size of the mountains. And these are how the Himalayan mountains were formed. And this is one of the reasons why you have some of the highest peaks in the world at the Himalayan mountains. So this is a continental, continental boundary. Now, some of the surface features found at these boundaries, remember oceanic continental and oceanic oceanic are going to have the same things. One, a subduction zone where the crust sinks back down below. Two, volcanoes because that magma comes back from the molten rock from the subduction zone and erupts onto the surface. And then three, a trench, a large depression or a large drop in elevation at the bottom of the ocean where the crust is sinking back down into the earth. Or that's the same thing with oceanic and oceanic boundaries. And then we have our continental boundaries. Our continental boundaries are most famous for building regular mountains. All right, and those are our convergent boundaries. Now let's move on to our last boundary of the Levodcast. The last boundary we're going to talk about are called transform boundaries. Now transform boundaries are different because divergent boundaries went away from each other. Convergent boundaries collided into one another. Transform boundaries do neither one of those. They just kind of slip past one another. So for example, in California, there's a major fault line that runs down California called the San Andreas Fault Line. And what this is, is actually the Pacific Plate meeting with the North American Plate. Based on their motion though, they're not going to necessarily collide and create a huge mountain range here. What these rocks tend to do is one part of the plate moves more north and then the other plate moves south. So they tend to slip past one another. And as a result, here's a map of California with the San Andreas fault line running through the state. As a result, you'll notice that eventually over time, Palm Springs and Los Angeles will move further north because of the plate motion that they have. So these cities, although they're down in South California right now, over the next millions of years or so, they will be further north in California up until they possibly separate from California. You have these two plates slipping past one another. And that's what a transform boundary is. Well, that concludes our vodcast on boundaries and tectonic plate theory. I hope you found that helpful.